Hello everyone, Dana here with Action VFX. In this video, I'm going to show you an introduction to the Foundry's Nuke. Nuke is an industry standard compositing software created by the Foundry. We will learn about the UI, how to import footage, a brief look on the node compositing workflow, as well as how to render out your shot. If you are interested, the Foundry has an educational license available for anyone who wants to learn Nuke. They also have indie license with a more affordable price for artists. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so first, what is Nuke? Nuke is a node-based compositing software, instead of layer-based like After Effects. So what does that mean? Well, layer-based compositing like After Effects means you are working with layers to compose your image, where you have your base layer, and if you want to add an element, you stack other elements on top of it. Node-based compositing software, like Nuke, uses a flowchart or diagram system, where you connect one element, a node, to one another to produce your final image. In Nuke, the node tree or diagram that you have created is called a script. Node-based compositing workflow provides you with a more visual working environment. This makes compositing big shots with loads of elements more manageable. Now, let's get into the software itself. Once you have your nuke opened like this, we are greeted by a semi-familiar site if you have used other VFX compositing software before. Here we have our viewer panel. This is of course where we will see the result of our work. We have the timeline here and then you can decide whether to see it in a frame mode or in a time code, but I prefer using frames. And then we have a bunch of other things here like the channels and then we have the f-stop and gamma to play around with the exposure of the viewer monitor and then down here we have the node graph panel this is basically where we will do our node compositing works in after effects or photoshop this is like our composition or our layer panel here we already have our node that is automatically there when we open the software called the viewer node if you hold the middle click of your mouse, you can move around your node graph. You can also center your node by clicking it and then press F. And then of course we can zoom in and out by just using the scroll wheel. Then on the side here we have our properties panel. This is basically where we'll have the settings for our node. And then we have our toolbar here. And this is basically like the effects toolbar in After Effects. Here we have all the different categories of tools and effects that we can use. And in some of the effects, you may see the shortcut key for that tool. So let's say we click this blur node here and it will create this node in the node graph. You can also access the toolbar through right click. Or my favorite method is just pressing tab and we will have this search bar where you can just basically search any nodes that you want okay let's delete this for now and then you can also full screen your panel by having your mouse hovering over the panel and press space bar okay so now let's start importing our footage into nuke before we import we want to press s and it will bring up our project settings here we have our current frame range of our project and then we have our fps or frame per second and we have here our full size format or our resolution which you can also see being reflected here on the viewer so i'm just gonna change this to 4k because that's the size of the footage that i will be importing here but of course these settings can be changed anytime by just pressing s so we are going to leave this for now let's close so in nuke importing is called read to do that you can go to the toolbar here and click read or you can just press r on your keyboard and we will have this import window here so click on the footage that we want to import i want to first select this mov of fiery smoke plume from our large scale smoke plumes collection that you can get on our website and then i'm also going to select this single frame of a backplate image and okay so now we have these files being read or imported to nuke as read notes read one and read two to see the footage on our viewer monitor you can just take this arrow with number one on our viewer node here and plug it into the node that we want to see in the viewer or you can just select the node and press one 
Now we can see the footage and we see our footage resolution being displayed here. Now I want to see the other footage. I can just move the viewing arrow to the other footage or I can just select it and press number two. So now the viewers have two streams that I can go back and forth by just clicking one and two. To disconnect a node from a stream, select the node that you want to disconnect and hold Ctrl Shift X. So now it's disconnected. On the right, you will see the properties of the node that we have created. We have the properties for read number one, which is our smoke plume, and we have read number two, which is our backplate. And here we have the file directories of each file, and also the size formats, the frame range, and some others. Okay, so let's take a look at one of our node here. Here we are playing the stream number one. As you can see, the timeline frame range has changed from what was set up in the project settings. In the project settings, it was set up as 1 to 100, but now it's 1 to 450. That is because when we read our first file, which is in this case our smoke plume, if its frame range is longer than the project settings, then the file's frame range will take over. So always make sure to check the project settings. Press S, and here we see our frame range has changed to follow the frame range of the smoke plume. So I want to fix this back into 100. So now we have our timeline trimmed back into 100. So let's close the project settings again. You can also offset the start time of your footage by first clicking the node and going to the dope sheet panel here. And there you will have your node being displayed in a timeline mode, which you can use to offset your timing. So let's undo and go back to the node graph. On the left here, you will see a list saying global. Global means our viewer panel is using our project settings as the frame range of this timeline. If you want to use the original frame range of the footage itself, you can just change this to input and we will have our timeline adjusted to the frame range of our footage that we are seeing. So let's change this back. Awesome. Now let's learn about the node compositing workflow. Okay, so here we have our node script with stream 1 connected to our smoke plume footage. Of course, we have learned to connect our viewers to our node, but now we want to do some VFX on our footage. Let's say I want to move and scale our footage around. Unlike in say After Effects where transformation properties such as position, rotation, scale are embedded in the layers themselves, in Nuke, you have to create a separate transform node outside of the footage and connect them. So let's press tab and search for transform node. Let's add our transform node in between our footage and the viewer node. There we go, so now they are connected. Now let's go to the transform property settings and just play around with it. And there we go. If you want to disable any node like this transform, you can of course disconnect it by holding Ctrl Shift X or undo, you can just press D. So now it is disabled. Okay. So the best part about node-based compositing like this is it's very flexible because node script is essentially just a flowchart or a diagram. That means we can use one node or one group of nodes multiple times by just creating a branch. Here, let's say I want to create another version of our smoke plume, but this time it doesn't have any transform and it is blurred. So let's bring a blur node and then I want to plug it into our smoke plume read node and then press one to view it. And then I want to blur it in the properties. So now let's press number two on the transform node. And now we have two different usages of our footage without any hassle of duplicating or crowding your workspace. So that was for modifying one node. What if I want to combine many images together? Well, to do that, we will use a node that will be our best friend, the merge node. So let's bring that here by pressing M. There we go, a merge node. So what is a merge node? Well, merge node is, as the name says, a node to combine multiple nodes together. You can see from these two input here, input A and input B. So what do those A and B mean? Well, I will show you. First, let's connect the A over here, and then let's connect the B to our backplate here. 
Then let's take a look at our merge node and let's play. So that what merge node does. It combines or merges the images that are put into the nodes based on the operation set in the merge node settings, which in this case, in the settings, we have over operation set, meaning we have stream A, which is this node group over stream B. You can click here and find the different types of operations that you can use. If you use After Effects or Photoshop, you may know this operation as blending modes. We will dive into these in other tutorial. But for now, we are just going to settle with stream A over stream B. Okay, so we learned how to import, we learned how to play around with nodes. Now, let's render out what we have on our viewer here. But first, I want to make this node script a little bit organized. So here, let's tidy things up just so it's nice to see. And then one thing that you can do to help tidy things up is holding control and you will have this yellow dots appearing and if you click it it will create this dot joint that can help organize the look of your script okay to export we are going to bring a new node so press tab and the node that we want is the opposite of read which is right there we go now we have our right node let's connect it to the merge remember to connect it to the node that is before the viewer on the right properties, let's set up our output format. So go to the file type here, and we can pick many different formats that Nuke supports. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to render an image sequence. So I will pick PNG because PNG is an image format and I want to render as PNG image sequence. And then let's decide our directory. So click here and I'm going to create a new folder. Let's name it render. And then we are going to name our file, of course. Now, in Nuke, you want to manually write down the extension of your file. So if you render as MOV, you want to write down .mov at the end of your file. Rendering an image sequence is a little bit different because we will not be rendering just one file, but multiple number files. So to accommodate that, in the directory, you want to type dot, and instead of the extension, we want to write a pound symbol. So later, Nuke will replace this with the frame number in the sequence, and then type another dot, and then the extension, P and G. Okay, and now we want to hit render. And then we will have this settings come up, and then we will decide the duration of the render. Currently, the duration is set to global, which is our project settings, so frame one until 100. If you want to render just one frame, you can just type the frame number that you want, like say five, or if you want to render multiple individual frames, you can just type say 5 and then frame 12, 65 and then frame 100. So now you will render just these four frames. So let's delete that and I'm just going to go back to 1 to 100 and we're going to hit OK. So now we are rendering. Let's wait for a while. OK, so it just finished rendering. Now let's bring it back into our project here. So press R and here we have our render. And here you can see Nuke has automatically read our PNG sequence as one clip. So we can just click this and import. Or if you want to import the individual frames of the sequence, you can just uncheck this sequence box and we will have all the individual frames laid out. So let's check this sequence back on. There we go. And open. So now if we press one and let's close all of our panels here and then full screen, press F to center and this is what we have. And that was the tutorial on introduction to Nuke. We already have other Nuke tutorials on this channel that you can check out right now and we will be releasing more, so stay tuned. And if you want to check out the asset that I used in this tutorial, you can check out our website at actionvfx.com. At Action VFX, we provide high quality VFX assets for your VFX needs. We have fire, explosions, energy, and many, many others. You can also sign up for our Action VFX subscription starting at the low cost of $14.99 per month. This is the most affordable way to access our library, and you can cancel anytime, no contract. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comment section below what kind of tutorials that you'd like to see next. And see you next time. Bye bye.